Now, as my shirt says, RAID is not a backup, but you can use ZFS replication for backups. I've done a few videos you'll find linked down below talking about how to set up ZFS replication. This is about when that goes wrong, how do you recover from it? Or how do you fix it so you don't just have to resend everything? And how do you fix a stuck process? As of version 2510 of Chernas, there's not any way I'm aware of in the UI to do this. So it does take a little bit of command line. But for those of you that are interested, Let's get started and show you what happens when a replication task breaks because it was transferring and the internet got dropped while I was doing a backup and the thing locked up. This video is not sponsored, but if you would like to hire us for a project, head over to laurentsystems.com or if you want to buy the Raid is Not a Backup shirt, you can also do that there. Now, both systems are running version 2510, latest available version here in December of 2025. Go to data protection and we see the failed job. Clicking on a failed job, doesn't give us much to go on. Go over here to the top and we can go right to the jobs page and we'll look at the failed replication run. And right here's where it shows the problem. We have a failed resume token. So here's the token that exists. And for some reason, it's not clearing the failed token. So let's go ahead and try and do that on the other system, the target for this backup. To see the tokens, we use ZFS get tack lowercase r, receive resume token, pool name, it's nested under the backups data set, and this is the data set we're actually targeting. And it shows for each snapshot if there's a receive resume token. And here's the one we want to clear. To clear the tokens, we use ZFS receive tack capital A, pool name, data set, and the final data set we're targeting. And we cannot destroy it because the process is busy. So let's find that process. And if we run PS tack EF, pipe, grep, we're just looking for the Zen critical backups because I want to see any process doing it and don't find grep running for this. That's what I'm filtering on that last part. And here is the process that is a listening process for a ZFS transfer. Let's go ahead and kill this process. Now this is the parent process. We could do a kill dash nine and kill that process, which should also kill this process. I'll show you another way to do it. You can use HTOP. F4 is a filter option in HTOP. And if we type in Zen, we find the main process and its child process. So let's go ahead and just kill that. And F9 is the kill command in HTOP. We press F9 and it killed that process. This process seems to still be running. So let's go ahead and kill this one too. Now both those processes are cleared. Couple quick notes. If I would have used the kill command, I would have had to also do both of those processes. And in using HTOP, the reason I filtered for Zen is because that's a partial name match and that's all it took to find that process that was hanging up on that data set. So what you would type in for your filtering depends on the name of your data set, either by grepping it or HTOP, because well, to me, HTOP is just an easy way to do it. Now killing the process might be enough to get the replication task going again. So at that point, go ahead and try running it. But I knew in my case, it wasn't going to do it because I had already tried this and I just didn't record that part of the video. So go ahead and follow the next steps if you have to, where you actually clear the token. Now let's run again the ZFS receive tag capital A to clear that resume token. Resume token cleared. And we can verify that by running this and we see no resume tokens. Go to our replication task and we're going to run now. Continue. And we can see the job is running. And if we go over here to net data, and we scroll down to our networking, we can see it's transferring the data. And this is going over a VPN, so it's not gonna go at quite the speed I'd like because that's all the bandwidth I have. Now, the part about this that's a little strange to me is I have not been able to simulate it. This happened by accident when there was an internet outage the other day for where my server is that I do my offsite backups to. But testing this here in my lab environment where I just randomly unplug things, yeah, not easy to repeat the problem. But occasionally what happens is when the ZFS replication task starts, it sets up Netcat to do a listen and do the ZFS send transfer. And when that transfer is going, if that system drops and then starts back up, that process is still alive and hasn't timed out yet on the receiving system. Now the system can be receiving whether you're doing push or pull in case you're wondering. It's it, wherever that process is running, waiting to get the data from where it is to where it's going to be. But it's just kind of an odd problem that's not been easy to simulate for me to file a bug report with the folks over at Chirnas. So hi, Chris, if you're watching this video, either one of the Chris's, but I will definitely keep plugging away to try and sort out when this happens because there is an automatic resume and it generally works fine. And sometimes just killing the process is enough to get the resume to work. I don't know why it didn't work this time. It just kept giving the same error. So 
I killed the resume tag. And when it does that, it's going ahead and resuming only what needed to be resumed, by the way, because there's several snapshots. It didn't have to retransfer the entire thing because there is an option to restart from scratch and send everything. But I still didn't want to do that because that would have taken a long time. It just sent the missing snapshots that were stuck since that process got broke just the other day when there was an internet outage. But hopefully this helps someone who has run into this issue and you're curious. I'd also love it if there's a future where we can see those jobs running or on the receiving end, I should say, not really a job, just a task waiting to listen, and I can kill it without going to the command line. Maybe there's a future where TrueNAS has that. I look forward to the future where that exists, so we don't have to go to the command line to, well, stop a little listener from listening and unhang the process. All right. Leave your thoughts and comments down below. Hit me up in the forums. Head over to the TrueNAS forums as well. That's a great place to discuss this topic. If you've run into this problem as well, I love hearing from you. Feel free to tag me in the TrueNAS forums because I do participate in there as well. So if you want to get my attention, I'm Lawrence Systems in there, and I'm uh, forums.lawrencesystems.com if you want to talk about it in my forums. Thanks.